don't go to the scriptures yet. We'll, we'll get to those in a minute. Amen. There are many different kinds of events that we experience in life. Amen. Some we like and some we don't. Anybody relate to that? Some we like and some we don't. We try to avoid uh, those that we do not like. Experiences in life. A wedding is a wonderful thing to attend, even more special if it's your own. <laughs> I'll just let that sink in. Going to work five to six days a week is an unhappy chore for some, but others love their job, and others that do not have a job would love to have your job. Yeah. So r rather than complain about, well, it's Monday morning, <laughs> amen, you ought to say, thank God it's Monday morning because I have a job. Because there's millions out there, Brother Dale, that doesn't have jobs, that have quit looking for jobs because, amen, they're just not out there. Contrary to what you hear in the news, which is a bunch of garbage, amen, we are in bad shape right now. Attending school or college or vacation or a dentist, uh, dentist, visiting relatives, shopping for grocery or shopping for other things. Some experiences we look forward to and others we wish that we did not have to do it. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to be me, okay? I, I, that's the only way I know to be and I, I get looks from certain individuals when I'm be, me a lot of times, but... <coughs> And everybody looks at my wife. Now, why, why would you do that? <clears throat> I hated to go to dentists. I did not like dentists. I just, you know, I mean, dear Lord, them needles are that long, and they want to stick it up in the roof of your mouth, and they pop out your eyeballs, and, I mean, just, just crazy stuff. I've never had that happen, but it's still crazy stuff. <clears throat> so I went into... When I was 21, I went into Dr. Slaughter. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even think anything about it until afterwards, you know, and I'm thinking, that, was, that, wasn't, a, that wasn't a smart thing to do. <laughs> but I went into Dr. Slaughter in Terre Haute, Indiana, and he pulled 16 in my remaining teeth. Only had 16 in my mouth. And of course, they, they, they put me to sleep, but I only had 16, and they, they pulled them, and and uh, we lived in Casey, and they, they uh, you know, I was driven back to Casey, you know, still kind of dopey. And they, uh, uh, at the time, uh, the, the girl's mother went into the pharmacy and said, uh, here, I need a prescription. And they looked at it, and they said, oh, my, somebody's hurting. So it must have been strong stuff. And she said, oh, yeah, somebody will be hurting. And so I, I went ahead and took them. And I, and, and I took him, I laid down, I slept for about eight hours, I got up and never took another pill. But thank God I was done with dentists. <laughs> oh, that, that was just, that was exciting, you know, I don't have to, don't, don't have to do that anymore. And yeah, praise God, I enjoyed that. I mean, it, <clears throat> but, but, see, back then, and it's not in my notes, it's probably you figured, but back then, uh, they, they didn't do what they do now as much. You know, now they pull your teeth and stick them in, and, and you know, and then when they pull them out, you know, he's like, ah! You know, uh, but back then they didn't do that. They just, uh, for six weeks, I went without any teeth. I could touch my chin to my nose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could just touch it there, and like Grandpa Weck, you know, just, the kids, the kids all got a big kick out of that, you know. <clears throat> I, I learned how to eat peanuts. I mean, I, I ate steak. I mean, by the time I got six weeks done, there wasn't much I could not eat. I mean, you know, I, well, gum. Not much I couldn't gum. <laughs> and, uh, and then I went in, back in for the big thing. And, of course, after having six weeks of nothing in your mouth, and then they stick a full... How many teeth you have? I don't know how many it is. Huh? 32? They stick 32 
you know, top and bottom, and I looked like Jimmy Carter. But back then, matter of fact, Jimmy Carter, when he first became president, he was all smiles, you know, and everybody said, well, you look like Jimmy Carter. And I said, thanks a lot. That's uh, you know. <laughs> well, I talked there for a while, you know. But during that six weeks, my pastor called me and said, uh, about four weeks into it, and he said, hey, I want you to preach tonight. And I go, you want me to preach tonight? <laughs> do, do, do you know what I just had done? Yeah, I know what you had done. I want you to preach tonight. And I go, I can't say my T's and my R's. And my S's weren't too good. So I'm a little funny off of this tonight, but I'll, I'll get to where I'm going in a minute. And uh, so I preached, and uh, we had a great service, and I had a hard time pronouncing some of the words. And maybe that's, maybe that's where I got all the trouble pronouncing now. You know, I mean, that's, what, that's my story. And... Uh, <laughs> So uh, an, another time uh, during that six weeks, I preached two times with no teeth, you know. And to me, that was a very humbling experience. You know, I mean, I'm not in front of everybody, and I'm, uh, you know. <laughs> no, I don't want to be here. I want to be out there with my mouth going, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but no, I'm up here blah, 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 talking. But I said all that to say, you know, there's some things that we don't, that it's uncomfortable for us. And one of the things that was really uncomfortable in my life was going to Dennis's. So whenever all this happened, I was willing to endure all of that uh, just so I wouldn't have to. Uh, and it wasn't just because we did it. It was because I needed to do it. Amen. So that there are things and experiences in life that we do not like. And there's things that we do like. Amen. The funeral. I would say the funeral is one of the things we really don't want to have to experience. It is a common thing that we all share as disliking and hoping that they are few as possible. I preached my dad's funeral. I preached my grandma's funeral. I preached uh, two of my other uh, grandparents' funeral. I preached my... Uh, my, my, my niece or husband committed suicide. I preached his funeral. Amen. I preached, uh, my, maybe I already said it, my uncle, my uncle and aunt, two aunts. And I mean, it was just like I became the family funeral director. And I'm like, you know, this ain't what I want to be known for, you know. Amen. So they're uncomfortable. I remember when I was preaching my dad's funeral, it was very uncomfortable because uh, about five years before he passed, we were driving along and he looked at me and he said, son, won't you do me a favor? And I said, yes, sir. What, what, what can I do to, you know, I, I, you know, I love my dad. I said, well, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to preach my funeral. And I go, seriously. Of course, back, th back then, seriously was not, you know, popular as it was then. But, uh, you know, I said, really? He said, yes. He said, I would be honored. So we did, but it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. Amen. There are experiences in life that are uncomfortable. Amen. Worldwide, everybody hates most fear funerals. John chapter 12, verse 3, uh, verse 3 and verse 7. If we have that, please. They took Mary, a pound of ointment of of spikenard and very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Verse 7. Then said Jesus, let her alone against, uh, let her alone. Against the day of my bearing has she kept this. Mark chapter 15 and verse 46. 46, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't add that on there. Probably my fault. And he brought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in linen and laid him in a sculpture, with a sepulcher, excuse me, which was hewn out of rock and rolled a stone up on unto the door of the sepulcher. Verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 1, please. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother J James and uh, Salome, 
had brought sweet spices that, that they made, uh, that they might come and anoint him. I'm trying to read too fast, and my wife saying you need to slow down because I just run over everybody. I run over the scripture. Uh, John eleven forty four. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Amen. See, that was a custom of some. Now, we associate certain common things with most funerals if you're to plan our own. Most don't plan it, uh, though, because they're even afraid to think about it a, long, uh, a little long to plan in advance, such as flowers and music. You know, I've had individuals say, well, that's morbid. It's not morbid. I tell you what's morbid, and, and, and forgive me if I'm stepping where I don't need to step, is whenever we don't care about our families after we're gone. You know, I, I have a heart attack and I die, and then they got to worry about picking out the flowers, picking out the casket, picking out the preacher, picking out the pallbearers, and just right on down the line, and I'm laying there dead. But we do not think about those things because a lot of us think that it's morbid to plan ahead even in our death. Amen. And, and, and I don't think it is. I think there are things that are uncomfortable. Amen. But the title of my message is planning your funeral. I'll, I'll, I'll do a positive thing here in a minute so we don't leave here all yeah, dead. Yeah, thank you. I couldn't have said it any better if I tried. <clears throat> but most of us don't like to plan with the flowers and the music and the guests and the location of the gravesite and who will officiate over the ceremony, burn or rot. And of course, the cost. Now, don't be offended with straight talk. The funeral is about handling the remains, it's about handling a corpse. We're not there anymore. Amen. The soul is long gone. See, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my, my wife's dear folks came from a time when people were very concerned about what others thought about them, their reputation, their integrity. Oh, dear Lord, what's that word? What's that word today? Nobody has any, any integrity today. I'm telling you what, the church, God's people, need to bring that word back to the forefront of what we are and who we are and what we say and what we do. Because if we don't have integrity, my friend, your word, your, your word is worthless. I, I, I got to tell on Sister Donna. I... I, I love you guys. I want you to know that. I want you to know that before I say this, okay? <laughs> I told them, I told them uh, Monday, I said, I want to tell you guys something. I'm so happy, so appreciative of you helping us do things. And she said, well, that's what we're supposed to do. And she said, after all, that's what Pastor Steve and you tell us that we need to do. And if I find out that you guys were wrong, one of you in trouble, if not both of you. <laughs> uh, see, well, we can have fun and still be a child of God. Yes, I, I enjoyed that humor. I, I thought that was funny. And, and I'm going to make sure I dig in the Word and make sure that I'm on target. <laughs> Amen. They were so concerned that they provided for their children in the inheritance. They did good deeds, and they gained much respect of all. Now, see, it doesn't matter if I have all the money in the world, and I don't have respect of my common people, amen, that I love and the people that are surrounded by me, amen. What have I gained? The Bible said, what, what have you gained if you lost? You gained the whole world, but you lost your soul. 
I want to be able to have integrity. Whenever I say something, amen, have you ever been wrong? Well, more times than I can count. But so have you. See, we're on the same page. So are, so have you. That's the reason that in this church, we don't want our church to set up this way. We want it to set up this way, meaning that, amen, we that are, are and, and I even hate to use this word, in leadership, I'll use that word. I was going to say in power because I don't have no power outside of what God gives us. But we in leadership, amen, the Bible says you that are in leadership, you are the servants among all. It's not like, okay, I'm up here, now you, here, wash my feet. Come on, wash my feet. I'm up here. You're down there. Well, no, 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 no. We, we as the leadership, amen, every one of us that are children of God, we, we need to become servants of the Most High and servants of everybody that we come in contact with. Amen. I am no bigger, no better, no mightier, no spiritual, no more spiritual than any of you, amen, that want to get where you need to be with God. Not a one of us. Amen. I don't know where I'm at here because, that, again, that wasn't in my notes either. Some today don't care how they act as long as selfishness permits them to get all that they can get. It's all about me, 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 I, I, I. Who cares about other feelings? Imagine somebody talking about... Uh, uh, Can't even pronounce the word now. The people that are cutting off the head. It is ISIS. Thank you. Amen. ISIS crisis. And, and they're happy that it's happening. And they, and they use religion as a reason. A blatant disrespect for human life. And suffering because they see the coming of Jesus is nearer. Amen. That, that's not being a Christian. That's not saying, well, I thank God it's happening over there because now I know that the coming of the Lord is that much nearer. No, 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 no. We need to understand that we are here to reach the lost. Amen. If we see that the Lord's coming back sooner and we feel his, his, his soon return is coming soon, we need to be more diligent and more ready to reach the lost than we've ever reached before. Every one of us. The Bible tells us that Jesus is a judge, but as long as we are here, we love souls, we care about them, and we don't judge and hate. We don't judge and hate. So, well, you, you come from this background. I don't care where you come from. What I'm worried about is what you're going to become. Not where you come from, but where you're going to go. Amen. And you will find that we as a people here do not judge you because of your past. Right. See, every one of us has got a past. Right. I got things in my past that I ain't telling nobody. Nobody here knows about them because uh, they're in my past. God forgave me of them, amen. He washed me, amen, from all my sins, and he put him in the sea of forgetfulness where, where he doesn't even remember them anymore. Right. Well, you remember when you did that? Yeah, I remember, but he don't. Because the blood has covered us. Amen. Be prepared. We may, we may get something worse, and th 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 there's things just going to come down the pipe, amen, that may just scare the daylights out of every one of us, amen, in the near future. But I'm telling you, as long as we hang on to Christ, amen, he said he'd never leave us or forsake us, amen, he'd go with us to the very end. A mature Christian can control their emotions. Now, see, I can't control what you think but I can control how I react to what you think. I cannot control what you say, but I can control how I react to what you say. Listen to me. I'm trying to help you tonight. I'm trying to help us tonight. 
Amen. The unstable person gets controlled by emotions, cannot turn them off or on. Priority is built into the Holy Ghost. Don't get unstable. See, the Holy Ghost will give us power to become everything that God wants us to become. But can I tell you this? The Holy Ghost is a perfect gentleman. He won't make you do anything you don't want to do. He won't make you say anything you don't want to say. And this old Flip Wilson thing from years ago, the devil made me do it. No, you did it because you wanted to do it. You did it because you couldn't control your carnality. You cannot control your mental thoughts. Amen. It had nothing to do with the devil. You did it. I did it. Amen. Spiritual priority. God number one. I want God before all things and above all things. Hebrews 11 38 says, I'll die for it, suffer for it, take ridicule and insult. Amen. I want God above everything else. He's my first priority. Say, so, well, my family is. No, God is. Right. Do we obey family or we obey God? Do we, well, the Bible says you obey man or God. I'm going to have to obey God. If God says it, then I'm going to obey Him. Doesn't matter what my brothers or my sister says. Amen. If God says it, I'm going to be obedient to Him. Amen. Number two, the salvation of souls. First, our own. So I got to worry about me being saved. So I can't stand up here and preach to you all one, one thing and live like hell myself because I have to worry about me being saved before I worry about any of you being saved. Mm. Then my husband or my wife. Then my kids. Then other family members. Then church. See, well, God has a priority. God has a system worked out where I, I need to worry about myself. I die daily. That's what the Bible says. I die daily. Some of you need to plan your funeral. You need to die daily. Say, well, I, when I come to church every Sunday, I, I get a blessing. That's not what I'm talking about. Amen. If the only time you get anything, and Pastor Steve has said this as well, the only time you get anything from God is a Sunday morning, then you got six days that you're living in hell. Providing for our daily living, basic food, clothing, shelter, nothing ex exuberant, but thankful for all things. I don't drive the car I want to, but thank God I got a car. Amen. I don't wear the finest clothes, but thank God, amen, I'm not here, I'm, I'm, I'm clothed. Amen. Gotta be careful there. Amen. We, we, had, we had a preacher one time preached in Lawrenceville, and he was talking about, he said, now, if your pastor was taken out, and they just stripped all the clothes off of him, and they threw him out in the middle of the street, some of you would raise up and say, no, we're not going to, and my wife said, the people didn't need a visual of that. <laughs> just like I gave you there. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew that was coming. I knew she'd go like, well... <laughs> Oh, Lordy. I'm so thankful I'm married to her because she's my balance. Just think, if she was like me, oh, Jesus, help us all. Help us all. But there's a balance there, you know. Uh, no, you don't need to say that. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> Because <laughs> it ain't right to say. <laughs> All right, I'll back off. The extra, more things, better quality things, not necessary, but just blessings. 
Be thankful and don't let them own you and control you. You know, one of these days I won't be rich. I'm getting almost to a place where I almost gave up that hope, but, you know, who knows? God, God can say, but you know the reason I want to be rich is because I want to be rich so I can be a blessing to other people. Amen. Not because I can drive a sports car and, and have, you know, the, the bigger house. I, I don't need that. The house we got is fine, and it's too big for us right now. If somebody come in and said, hey, I'll give, you, I'll give you a book price for it, I would say, uh, sign right here, please. Then she and I will find a place that's a little bit smaller, one level, I think. I'll stay away from the house a lot more <laughs> uh, for, for her sake. For her sake. I, I really meant that, Sister Barbara, for your sake, not mine. Yeah, I'm digging a hole. Let's get out of it. John 1, 1 and 3 says the reason for the greatest, verse 1, uh, verse 22 and 20, and, and I don't have them on there, and I don't have them, so don't worry about it. Had it all taken even basic needs, yet God confirmed. All I need is just the basic. I, I need food. I need water. I need clothing. And you know what? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Amen. Abraham tested to kill his son to provide his love for God, that God was number one in his life. Wow. Wow. Wonder how many of us could have done that. At the, the base of the mountain, and he turned around to his servants and said, The son and I will return. See, somewhere in his mind, he he'd already believed, he'd already prayed about it. He'd already been, he had a relationship with God. And he and he knew that he was taking his son up to sacrifice his son because his son carried the wood up the mountain. And when he got there, he laid the son down, and the son said, Dad, where's the sacrifice at? Not knowing that he was a sacrifice. Oh, shanda. But in the midst of that, the sacrifice was coming up the other side of the mountain. God had it all under control. And God was saying, you know what, Abraham, all I wanted to know is, if you were willing to do, give the, give the most important thing in your life back to me. And whenever God saw that he was, he said, I swear I will bless you. I tell you what, when God is swearing that he's going to bless you, honey, you better watch out because there's some blessings coming. He said, I, I swear I'll bless you. Amen. My in-laws had every detail of the funeral plan ready and arranged before it happened. They didn't want to be a burden to anybody even after death. It was just the training they received in their life. Caring for others is needed in church starting at the top and moving all the way through the pews. I think we're a family. You know, I said, but, but you're a church. No, we're more than a church. We're, we're a family. We take care of each other. We love each other. Amen. I've got your back. You've got my back. I was telling somebody, uh, maybe Pastor Steve, I was telling somebody about my in-laws and how that uh, d during the course of the years, we, we've had to borrow some money off of them a couple times. And it wasn't loaning money to, my, to their daughter. And it wasn't loaning money to the son-in-law. It was a business transaction. And if it was due on the 10th, and he didn't get a check on the 10th, the 11th, he was calling saying, uh, I didn't get my check yesterday. Uh, it's in the mail. Well, you know when I get it, there'll be penalties that will be added to the loan. I said, yes, sir, I know that. 
I didn't mind that. I respected that. I mean, what, what, what gives us the concept that because their family and their, their mom and dad or their sister, their relatives or whoever they are, that I can treat them like it's a, give, it's a given thing. It was a business transaction. And I'm telling you, he went through his books. If he was off a penny, I guarantee you, he spent days trying to find out where that penny was. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating one bit. One penny. He worked on that thing until he found it. You know, I wanted to say, here, I'll give you a penny. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, no, I got to find out where this is. No. Jesus came to deliver us from bondage. He did it by destroying the one who had the power over death by defeating death itself in the resurrection. Amen. Don't get stung. Yes, we all experience the fear of dying at one time or another. But after we are born again, after we permit Jesus to live inside of us, God may uh, permit you to experience the face of death in the face and laugh at it. My wife said, told me more than once, she says, it's not death that I fear, it's the pain that comes along with it. Because if you know who your Redeemer is, and you've been washed in His blood, you've been filled with His Spirit, this, should, this shouldn't be. We all be able to lay down at night, and, 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 and I do. We lay down at night just saying, God, if this is the last day, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Because if it's the last day, I'm going to be walking on the streets of gold one of these days soon. Hallelujah. Amen. Spiritual living requires planning your death, and I'm closing. Romans 6, 1 through 6, and I, I, we, didn't, we don't have any of them up. Prayer requires an attitude of putting the carnal uh, self down. Decrease so that he can increase. Or death. The Bible said that he must, we must decrease so that he can increase. How do, we, how do we decrease? By dying to self. By planning our spiritual funeral. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. We need to plan our spiritual funeral every day. Where will it be? It could be in the chair in the living room. It could be beside the bed. Who officiates? We do. No flowers, no music. Only one guest, and his name is Jesus Christ. We do the killing. Don't ask Jesus to help you do your part. Romans 8 and 13 says, For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Amen. Hallelujah. Conclusion, and I'm closing. Luke 7, 11 through 15. We're all destined to die, which means a funeral of some kind. But Jesus promised us a resurrection. Have faith to believe Him and trust Him. It all starts with planning our own death in prayer. Die daily and then ask Jesus to resurrect you. Ask Jesus to refill you. Ask Jesus to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts 2.38 says, Repent. That means to die. 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for or to obtain remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All of you have heard me say this, but nowhere in the Bible was anybody ever baptized in the titles. They were only baptized one way, and that was in Jesus' name. No other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Acts 4 and 12. Would you stand with me? If you're here tonight and you just want to say, God, I just want to die all over again. I want to die daily. But I haven't done it yet today, so I'm going to come and I'm going to stand. And I'm going to say, God, here I am. Use me, Lord. Take whatever little gift that I have. And would you multiply and use it, Lord? We ask it in Jesus' name.